Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to yet another Destiny 2 Forsaken video and today I'll be showing you a walkthrough and a guide for one of the brand new Nightfall strikes for this specific week called the Hollowed Lair. This is not a regular Nightfall guide though as we're going to be setting up tons of modifiers, I'm going to be showing you the loadout that I specifically used and my teammates and general tips throughout the strike so that you can get yourself 100k score. The 100k score is a minimum threshold that you have to reach if you're trying to get one of the powerful rewards from the nightfall which is on a weekly reset this is of course important because the raid drops on friday which is less than 48 hours away and you want to get to as high of a power level as humanly possible so anyways guys let's just jump into the modifiers first because that is going to be the most important so up first we have solar singe this is the burn that you're definitely going to want to have on for this nightfall strike not too many enemies in here do solar damage for the most part it's just void and arc there was one instance where I do remember solar damage being a bit of a problem, but it's definitely not something to be worried about when you're doing this strike. It was the actual tank halfway through. He does a solar blast, and that does a little bit more damage than necessary, but really, you shouldn't be anywhere close to the tank grouped up together as a fire team. So the next burn that we have, and actually before I get to that, I do also want to mention that the reason why we're on solar burn is because we have the Whisper of the Worm, aka the Black Hammer. This thing is filthy, and with solar burn, it is very good, especially against the boss. So up next, we have Extinguish. Now, Extinguish is if all fire team members go down in a restricted zone, you get placed back into orbit. I know it's a it's a pretty serious perk. You know, it's one of those that we had in Destiny 1 on all the strikes, and it was something that we couldn't really take off for a while until Bungie removed it after realizing it was too hard for casual players. But this is something you're going to want to put on because it gives you a very big multiplier bonus there was actually a specific place where me and my fire team all went down but it wasn't a restricted zone and so we didn't get put back into orbit overall though I would definitely weigh the pros and cons of this and because of the massive score increase in multiplier I would choose this and play just a little bit safer the next one we have is match game so what match game does is essentially the damage of an enemy shield will be resistant to all unmatched elemental damage so if somebody has an arc shield and you're using solar, you will be doing so little damage that it's going to be very, very long and tough to break his shield. So make sure you and your fire team are running a good variety of things. I was the only person in my fire team that wasn't running something that was basically a triple burn loadout. I had the arc super, which was brand new to the warlock. I also had the spindle and the EP shotgun, which were solar, but I didn't have any void weapons. My teammates, on the other hand, were running one of each. They had either a void subclass, then they had the whisper, and then they had solar in, sorry, not solar, they had arc in the secondary slot. So make sure that most of you guys, two out of the three, are running one of each burns and have your solar burn weapon as the whisper and then have the other stuff as something else. I personally just chose the EP shotgun because that was something that I had that was very high power level and it also is extremely effective at melting and doing DPS damage and that's something that we were lacking at the time so that's what I chose specifically. Now finally we also have blackout. Blackout completely takes out your radar and it makes it so that enemies do increased melee damage. It's really not that big of an issue especially if your team are coordinated because you're for the most part watching each other's backs and nobody will really sneak up on you and get a melee kill but if they do uh, prepare to get one shotted especially if you're somewhat of a lower power level now we didn't put any power handicaps you know we didn't lower our level at all because I thought it was a little bit unnecessary and it turns out it was because at the end of the strike we got to the boss room with about hundred twenty seven thousand score which is definitely more than enough and we were you know doing this in in pretty regular time we weren't necessarily speed running it we weren't doing it at a very slow pace we we're doing just you know casually playing it just trying a little bit hard not to die and we got there with more than ample time so those are the only burns that you need don't go ahead and put anything else on don't lower your power uh, power level via a handicap you don't need to do any of that so with that out of the way guys and the weapons covered like the whisper let's get into the actual guide because there are a few difficult stages during this strike 
All right, we're going to be starting things off at the spider boss tank. And the reason being is because, honestly, me and my fire team could have done this a lot more smoothly. And I want to give you guys a lot of tips for this encounter to make it go by a lot quicker. You can not only save time, but just make this encounter way less of a headache. And just do not do what we did right there. Me and a fire team member were still working on an ad while our third was actually going for DPS damage. Obviously, it's not really his fault. He wanted to get in there and do damage. But if you have a coordinated attack, this does not need to be longer than a one phase you can easily take him out especially if you have something like the EP shotgun or the whisper of the worm snipers and as a fire team you can easily just team shot him especially when his core opens up and you can do all that precision damage and that will not lead to what just happened there I ended up dying and the other fire team member that was beside me was very low health we could have easily died if there was more ads there and you have to be very careful because this boss does solar damage every time he does that barrage so so again, once all the ads are cleared, go ahead and as a fire team, take out his legs with a whisper and then go for his core. You can very easily take him out in one phase and I do have to warn you, once he does get, you know, very low health, make sure two of you get out the bubble and one person stays on top and finishes him off. Reason being is because when he explodes, you do not want to get launched and get hit into a barrier or wall and die and that would really be an embarrassing way to go out, especially in an unrestricted zone. You don't want to be returning back to orbit at any point another reason is because obviously once you do kill the spider tank ads will spawn in high volume make sure you have a tether ready or some kind of super that can generate lots of orbs against these guys because that will give you a lot of score towards your 100k threshold that you have to meet if you didn't know orbs is a fantastic way of getting score and i believe you also get a ton just from picking up ally orbs so make sure you do that once all the ads spawn after the spider tank is dead and after that we can proceed into the next encounter this one right here is actually the counterweight part of the nightfall strike where you have to step on the plates make sure you are team shotting that is honestly the name of the game for this specific segment and this is really where you're going to want to bust out all of your class abilities and utilize everything that you have on your class put down your rifts when you're in trouble make sure your team is standing in it put down the shields to cover your angles because there are lots of ads that spawn and this is really where you're also going to want to use your supers the ogre will spawn once both of the players plates are down and once you have cleared out a good portion of the ads so be very careful he does lots of damage but it is arc so you don't have to worry too too much about solar singe you can use your black hammer on him pretty effectively but be wary because he does have a fairly small crit spot now the crit spot was a problem for me to hit i don't know why it just seemed like every single time he was walking down that sloped hill he was bobbing and weaving his head a little bit and then every time he flinched you you would just your screen would shake so much so it was a bit of a nightmare if you can have one person on your team kind of attracting his attention then that would be the best bet but for the most part you just want to take this nice and slow and just do damage at a pace that's comfortable for you and your fire team don't rush it because you will end up dying as more sp uh, ads will keep spawning as his health gets lower i believe every one third of his health another group of ads will spawn and some of them are shielded captains so be very careful with those as they will kill you as my fire team member just died over on the right side of the map they are arc so if you have an arc super or even an arc bolts grenade those things work wonders against them and do a lot of damage even after taking out his shield so that's one thing i can recommend doing once the boss was low health after just us plugging away at him and killing the ads that he spawns, what we ended up doing was just shotgunning him. We realized that the time was slowly dwindling down and so we kind of put our foot down and said we gotta finish him here. One of our teammates essentially baited himself and got the slam effect on and if you didn't know, once an enemy slams that's a very big boss like that, they usually can't do another one in quick succession. So that gives you about a 3 or 4 second window to get in there with your shotgun and stagger him which will give you even more time to do dps so once he's at like one third or 25 percent health left you can go in with shotguns just make sure that you get his slam off and then you go in once he's in that little stomping animation that he can't get out of so after that there's going to be this bridge phase right here and i do have to warn you guys keep in mind that this still is an unrestricted zone this could be one of those zones that you guys take a little bit lightly because you just had a challenging encounter and this seems fairly easy compared to that but 
but be careful. One thing I can recommend is staying exactly where I am until a lot of these ads are dead. If you jump over the trap like my teammates are doing, you do not have protection against the enemies from the right, because right now the trap is actually covering me and giving me uh, some help, believe it or not, and then you can kill some of those ads and then move up. If you jump ahead of the trap and then you're stuck there, you get meleeed, it is GG well played. Now this boss right here is a wanted. We realize that we really should not take this guy out because he has way too much health and the clock is slowly dwindling down. Make sure that you're leaving this guy and you really don't have to deal with him unless you're at a deficit. If you are not at 100k yet and you need a lot of score, then I can recommend taking him out if you have a lot of time left, but if you're in our position where you have 113,000 score and the clock is dwindling down, then just get through this as quickly as possible and get to the boss room so that you can start that encounter because it is a little bit lengthy. It is time gated as well. Once you do a certain amount of damage to the boss, he will become immune, so you can't necessarily speed run the crap out of it, so you do have to get there with ample time remaining before the clock gets to 18 and your modifier goes to zero. Alrighty, we are finally at the boss and let's talk about him because this is where things start to get hectic. If you thought the rest of the strike was chaotic, then you have not seen anything yet. And we're just very lucky that honestly this boss does not do solar because with Solar Singe, this guy would probably just look at you with his gaze and you would just fall victim to him. Your ghost would die and you would have the same fate as Cade. I'm not even kidding. So this guy does a lot of damage even though he's arc, so be very careful. If you're even slightly week this guy will one shot you now just to give you a perspective me and my fire team members here were probably about power level 529 528 around that region maybe a little bit lower than that but we were definitely above 525 and he was one shotting us when we were pretty weak so just be very careful here you do not want to mess with him now one thing i have to recommend and stress and this is super important and please listen to this advice save your supers do not use it at the boss ever never ever ever use your super at the boss as you guys can see there are a load of enemies that spawn here and you need to save your super for that if they get close to you especially those scorn that have these solar lanterns in their hands they will destroy you because it is solar burn so make sure this is where you're really using you know not only your tethers but also your slay heavy supers i had the one that was the brand new uh, arc storm caller and that thing was great at killing ads but it didn't last as long as I would have liked. An Arc Strider does just as well, especially if you have Radon Flux, and then of course a Tether works wonders as well. I used my super just 10 seconds ago and I already have it back, and I assume my teammates also have their supers back because of how many orbs we created from all of those ads. Not only is this part a little bit hectic and chaotic, but it's super super fun. So honestly, even though this is very challenging, enjoy it because melting that many ads with a super is always a fun time. Make sure you also save your arc grenades and some arc weapons for when the boss does that specific attack. If you get too close to him and you don't have enough time to tear down his shields before he pulls you in, he will one stomp all of you and you will die and return to orbit. I shit you not, he will one stomp you and you will all be dead. So make sure you save an arc grenade, make sure you have one person specifically that, you know, that's his responsibility to save an arc grenade to take down his shield once he pulls you into that, uh, I guess it's a trap, so just be wary of that specifically. Alright, so I'm going to try dumbing down this entire encounter so that hopefully you guys can get a better grasp of what's going on and when you need to use specific things. When the boss is inside his chamber and lots of ads are spawning in masses, that's the only time you want to use your super and do not use it at any other point. Now of course there is an exception, once the boss is very low in terms of his health, you can use it to finish him off, but otherwise do not do so. Now once that is over with and the boss comes back inside the arena, you want to use Use your primary weapon on him as well as your power weapon ammo if you have some. That is when you're going to unload with your sleeper and your whisper of the worm. Now you're probably wondering when do you use your special ammo? Well if you have a shotgun or a fusion rifle you want to use your special ammo on the ads that spawn on the sides of this big room. That is of course when the boss is actually inside of the arena and you're doing DPS. When all those ads are swarming you that's what you want to use your close range shoddy for. Now there's also a very interesting 
little spot that we found that is actually almost like a little bit of a cheese. I don't want to say it's a cheese because it really isn't, but it's very close to it. Now, there was a specific part where me and my fire team member were both down and there was one guy remaining, and he sat behind a particular down servitor that was on fire, and no ads killed him, and the boss didn't do any damage to him, and he was waiting there for about 30 seconds for our reses to spawn. So I'll show you that clip on screen right now, and it was actually very, very odd. So that's a spot that you can utilize if you're ever in a pickle. Now, of course, the last rule that I want to stress that I already talked about is make sure one of your guys is saving something arc for when the boss actually does his trap and he pulls you towards him. If you do all of those things, this nightfall strike should be no problem and you should get it done relatively easily with the 100k threshold. And that's going to do it for the video though, guys. Of course, this nightfall does grant you a brand new emblem, which is very, very nice. And that's one of the reasons why we chose this one. And also, you have a chance of getting a brand new nightfall exclusive shotgun that I will be making a review on later today. So keep an eye out for that. The shotgun looks absolutely amazing and it's one of my favorite looking weapons in the game by far. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, a like rating would be very much appreciated. Subscribe for more daily Destiny 2 Forsaken content. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all later. Peace.